In the heart of Central Asia lies an isolated place, enveloped in a silence that screams for the revelation of its mysteries. This land is truly precious, having been home to remarkable leaders throughout history. With an area of 448,000 km2 and a population of about 35 million, it is a country rich in history, culture, and natural resources. Balochistan serves as the cradle of a warm population and a unique culture, where ancient traditions are revered, and Islam is celebrated, becoming an authentic refuge in Central Asia. In past epochs, this area was the epicenter and capital of the Islamic world. Samarkand, known as the Golden Pearl, and Bukhara, a major center of Islamic expansion, were some of the world's most magnificent cities during the reign of Tamerlane. Tamerlane is a prominent figure in Uzbek history, playing a crucial role in protecting Central Asia from Mongol invasions and ensuring the continuity of the Uzbek lineage. During his reign, notable Islamic schools, madrasas, were built in Uzbekistan, such as those in Registan and Asamarkanda, recognized by UNESCO as the first of their kind in Central Asia. The Islamic heritage continues to shine in the region with all its grandeur. Uzbekistan gained independence just 32 years ago, following the collapse of the Soviet Union. Despite absorbing some influences from Soviet Russia between 1924 and 1991, the Uzbek people have managed to preserve their identity, language, and deep connection with Islam. Primarily known for producing cotton and wheat, these goods are exported to other nations. Additionally, thousands of Uzbeks work abroad, sending remittances back to their families. Despite being rich in natural resources, including gas, oil, and even gold deposits, a large portion of the population still faces challenges in achieving a comfortable life. After three decades of post-Soviet governance, Uzbekistan is in a phase of development aiming for continuous progress. Moreover, a brief two-hour train journey from Samarkand to Bukhara reveals another wonder. This city was once the third most important along the ancient Silk Road and currently hosts one of the world's largest ancient minarets. The renowned Kalan Minaret, erected in 1227, remains imposing to this day despite Mongol invasions. Another notable achievement of Uzbekistan is the art of carpet weaving. Though many associate this practice with Iran, the tradition of weaving carpets in Uzbekistan is equally impressive. Uzbek women dedicate themselves to this art form, producing handmade carpets of great beauty which are sold in markets to support their families. Regarding the cost of living in the country, it's important to note that the minimum wage in Uzbekistan is around $320, while average workers earn about $500. A one-bedroom apartment in the city center costs an average of $200. For a single person, supermarket expenses vary from $50 to $100. Surprisingly, the price of gasoline is 30 cents per liter if one owns a car. Handicrafts are affordable in the country, though there is a considerable markup on imported goods. Walking through the streets of Tashkent, it's evident that over 90% of vehicles are Chevrolet. Due to high import tariffs on vehicles leading General Motors to establish a factory in Uzbekistan, producing Chevrolet cars locally. With lower tariffs for domestically produced vehicles, the streets are now filled with Chevrolets. Uzbekistan is also known for hosting the largest bazaars in Central Asia. The covered market of Tashkent, viewed from above, resembles a dome or a turtle shell. In this market, everyone can satisfy their needs, and showing interest in an item prompts sellers to offer samples in the hope of securing a purchase. In Uzbek bazaars, it's easy to find vending machines for sunflower seeds, Samarkand's halva, and the sour cheese called kurt. Places like Tashkent and Samarkand not only produce finished goods, but also the famous Uzbek bread. Bakers dedicate themselves completely to the art of bread making, literally bending inside the traditional clay oven to bake the bread. They do not compromise on the quality of their work, offering a fascinating experience both in watching and tasting Uzbek bread. The result of this effort is a more nutritious and satisfying Uzbek bread, thanks to the richness of the ingredients, something truly unique compared to common bread found around the world. It is said that in times past, soldiers would carry Uzbek bread into war, as it could sustain them for a month without deteriorating, as claimed by Uzbek bakers. A single bakery on average produces about 8,000 of these famous Uzbek breads daily. In Uzbekistan, cuisine goes beyond this delicious bread, becoming a true paradise for meat lovers and gaining fame for its incredible street food. During the Soviet period, many aspects of Uzbek culinary tradition were suppressed, but now the streets of Uzbekistan are reborn with vitality. Uzbeks take pride in their pilaf, 
considered the undisputed king of delicacies. Local restaurants start early, dedicating themselves to preparing this flavorful dish in huge cauldrons filled with meat, rice, chickpeas, carrots, and oil. For example, preparing a pilaf with 100 kilograms of meat requires on average 40 liters of oil. The cooking process involves the meat cooked in oil until perfection, as Uzbeks prefer their meat well cooked. Carrots and chickpeas are added, mixing with the succulent meat, and rice, the main ingredient, transforms the cauldron into a delicious pilaf. The harmony between these elements defines the conclusion of the pilaf, which is served with respect to the customers. The fascinating coloration of the rice is not completely white due to the carrots, so visiting Uzbekistan means appreciating these three culinary elements. Abundant bread, abundant rice, and abundant meat, which play a central role in the rich Uzbek culinary tradition. The Uzbek cuisine not only includes beef and mutton, but also extends to horse meat. Some Uzbek families prepare pilaf with horse meat, although this practice has increased the risks of cardiovascular diseases among the elderly population. Contributing to heart health issues and arterial occlusions in Kyrgyzstan and Uzbekistan. In rural areas of Uzbekistan, a unique delicacy called samsa, resembling a seashell in appearance, is prepared. Rural inhabitants prefer cooking in traditional ovens rather than on gas stoves, preserving this traditional culinary method that contributes to the delight of Uzbek cuisine. In many homes, it's common to find a closed oven, where a variety of pastries and bread, including samsa with different types of meat, are prepared. Uzbekistan fascinates not only with its historical sites and cuisine, but also with daily life. Tashkent, the most populous city in Central Asia with three million inhabitants, has aspects that remind one of Russia in various ways. If you've had the opportunity to visit Russia, you'll certainly notice significant similarities between Tashkent and Russian cities. The streets and avenues of Tashkent are notoriously wide reflecting the vast area of 448,000 square kilometers of Uzbekistan and its relatively small population, resulting in wide spaces between city buildings. The architecture of the buildings also shares affinities with the Russian style, and it's possible to find playgrounds from the Soviet era in side streets of the city. The preservation of these structures in countries that were part of the Soviet Union has always surprised me. Currently, Uzbekistan receives a considerable number of immigrants from Russia, and it's common to see signs in Uzbek and Russian in many places, especially in the capital. Russian plays a significant role in the lives of Uzbeks, with Russian inscriptions visible everywhere, especially in bookstores. Conversely, the Uzbek language shares several similarities with Turkish, despite the geographical distance between them. Turkic-speaking countries are linguistically related, and on the streets of Uzbekistan, it's common to find street vendors offering a variety of products. Although Uzbekistan is no longer isolated from the world, large Western store chains have begun to establish themselves in the country. However, it's unfortunate to observe that children begging for money on the streets of Tashkent are a reality. Sitting in a public place, it's common to be approached by someone asking for money, usually sent by another person, and they leave if they receive nothing. On the streets, it's also possible to see pigeons painted in various colors. At first glance, it might seem that they are a unique species due to the colors of their feathers, but in reality, the pigeons are painted for a specific purpose. If one wishes to photograph these birds, the person responsible for their well-being will ask for money, as they somehow manage to earn income with these pigeons. The subway system plays an essential role in transportation in Tashkent, being widely used by the population for their daily commutes. Inaugurated in 1977, the Tashkent subway was the first in Central Asia and reflects the aesthetic attention characteristic of the Soviet era. With exceptionally well-designed stations that fascinate people with their visual beauty, for intercity travel, trains are often used in Uzbekistan, with train staff wearing their uniforms elegantly. So tell me, have you ever been or would you like to visit this country? Write it in the comments below. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe to the channel.